Well, I don't see where uh, uh, the fact of where she got the information has anything to do with the validity in the statement. And uh, what I hear constantly is, where do you get your data? Um, is the information incorrect? If it's incorrect, then I think then you need to examine where it came from. But if it's not, Sounds then like why? you agree with the book. Well, I, have, I, I do agree with a lot of the statements made in the book. But um, what I'm addressing now is what she said. Yeah. You're upset at the, the challenge to her authority. Well, I mean, I don't see where the question has any uh, okay. importance to, okay. to what's going on. Okay. Hang on one second. Great. Yes, ma'am. I interviewed 379 black men who were either married to or dating white women. I interviewed over 100 black women who were either married or dating black women and over 1,000 nearly 1,200 black men and black women around the country. But what I found is that we don't have a control group. There was no point in me listing everybody's name in the back of the book. What was y'all going to do, call them all up? The point is, is that by putting their name, you know, by not including that, then what I'm trying to say is that we have a collective problem okay. that affects all of the people. All there right. was no point in doing that. It is impossible to sensationalize a book that uses quotes like, the black woman is a rat who behaves like are a dog you while purring a, like a are cat. Are you, what is your nationality? I'm um, Puerto Rican. As okay, the well, I didn't knows. write it for the Puerto Rican man. I wrote it for the black man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate, that we have a very special man, and he has a set of very special needs, just like we have. We need to stop claiming that we are all the same. We are not all the same. We have the problems that come from the psychological trauma that we suffered in slavery that we have not revived from yet. And so we have to address that. Do you and we can no longer pretend that it's the white man's fault or that it's your fault or anybody else's. I'm just saying, let's look, go into our homes and let's look at ourselves. The only civilizations where we have ever been successful and the black man didn't have a problem supporting us, being in charge of our homes and raising our children until he was brought to this country and turned into a slave and he lost his position in our home. I am appalled that we are here today trying to discuss black men and black women relationship and all you black women that are sitting here in opposition are not thinking about coming together. Well, it's hard to do that. Just stay Is it a balanced picture that I am the first black woman in 500 years to write a book in favor of the black man? Is that a balanced picture? You're not the first woman to do. You keep saying that you're the first woman, but the, the world didn't begin with you. You're just trying to make money off of black women, and it's not right. This was not intended to be a book of balance to show the good points and the bad points of the black woman. This is to show that we are strong black women. But I'm saying we have used our strength in the wrong direction. We're using it against the. I didn't have to show it in that. You wrote book, your book the way you wanted to. Didn't nobody buy it. I wrote mine the way I wanted to, and it was the truth. Are you there, Carl? And that's what the real issue is here. Uh, hang on one second, please. Yes, ma'am. Please let this young woman make her case. I think that that woman expresses a lot of what black women feel about the book, which is that the book expresses a lot of negativism about, but we practice a lot of negativism. It has to be faced. We have to face what we do in order to change what we do. People spend millions of dollars every year with psychiatrists who sit them on a couch or lay them on a couch so that they can come to grips with what they do and live in reality. That's what we have to do. We have to face it. I read the book from cover to cover. I agree. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yes. Listen, now I have raised my children. I'm all through all this, but I've been reading the book and I want to highly recommend it to black women black men and what up wait a minute because that's a fine upstanding woman on that podium over there and she does not come here to down pride her race you can believe it i'd like to as the only woman here say thank you shaharazad ali for writing this book. i'd also like to ask this audience to please calm down let's have some dignity white america is watching Said that if if the woman's out of this gapping hole comes all of this stuff, well, Orientals say the ruination of man comes from his mouth and wisdom comes from his heart. Only Shaharasad said it in a colloquial way for black men to understand. Thank you for being the catalyst that yeah, we I got need. a question for you. Mm -hmm. to, quote, quote from the book. To the black man, the black woman's problems represent a challenge and a responsibility. The challenge is to subdue her and put her in her rightful place, end quote the book. You agree with that statement? Not only, not only do I understand the context. Agree? Wait a minute. Let me finish. Not only do I, I'm going to tell you, I'm not afraid of any of y'all. Not only... Not only do I understand the premise, the question, I agree. What we have is a situation where I'm not working for me. All I'm building, all of these black people's careers. If it wasn't for my book, wouldn't nobody know who none of these people were. <laughs> Comments.
sit down and go back to Sherry's after the final statement. Go. Quick. Yeah, I've read the book and I, and I think the book is a thousand percent correct. I want to thank Sister Sherry. Yeah. 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 Yes, I think the book is totally incorrect. I think the book is just a manifestation of black men who need to take the place of the oppressor and trying to. Uh, I would disagree. Sally Raphael for bringing the show to the forefront and bringing the book to the forefront. I would like to say that uh, Ms. Shahrazad Ali is in her third or fourth printing. Uh, she's on her way to selling almost a quarter million books. She's while, a million now. while we are sitting over a here, in terms. while we are sitting here, are uh, joking. What I would like to say, what the book did for me, you, un you, un you understand? And I would like to say I feel very upset here because I'm, I've, I've had that background of fighting. Okay, and when I'm sitting there trying to be cool and I see a group of women in the back of me turn around to a young man no more than about 16, 17 years old and spew their hostility on him rather than, rather, rather than correcting him, rather than, rather than. You don't have to listen to y'all. Rather they, they both claim they heard it. Is this? Excuse me, excuse me, but I'm eight. No, 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 no. I have the mic. I have the no, mic. No, let the brother talk. It's the black man's guide. Let the black man talk. Yeah. My point was, if you are accusing somebody of cursing at you, and you in turn turn around and curse them, you understand what I'm saying? I don't see the difference. If Shahrazad takes a position and you think her position is inferior, then what you need to do is produce a more superior position. Wait, if you have let let her just you answer. Don't ask oh. black man what the book has done for you. Ask me what the book has done for me. First of all, I didn't curse him, and he did not curse me. I have an opinion, she has an opinion. If you ask me, she's the one that's out of control here, not the black woman in the audience. My name is Yamla Van Zandt, and I am a Yoruba priestess and a okay. cultural custodian. This is not our culture. This book is anti-cultural, anti-African, and anti-historical. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because our ancestors, our ancestors have said that our key to our growth is love. This book contains no love. It doesn't encourage love. It doesn't support love. And it dismisses the most loving force on this earth, the African woman. Uh, back in 2013, I interviewed you when I worked with Madame Noir, okay. uh, and we had, you know, a, a viral moment. We talked about Black women and boundaries, and, and you said we were out of order. <laughs> you, it's still you, out of order. <laughs> oh, like, you're not even going to let me set up the question. You said, <laughs> well, tell me, you know, you said if we understood who we were, we would not let other people define us and confine us, and then you said we're demeaned, diminished, demoralized in ways we accommodate. Tell us why you say we're so out of order. Um, I think now because we get paid to be out of order now. Okay. Uh, a family is like a nation. And in every nation, you must have one head of the government that the rest of the people in that nation cooperate with in order to be successful. And if not, you have anarchy. And that's what we have now in our black homes because the man has been uh, displaced and we have devalued the importance of the black man in the home in order to save the black family. It can't be done with just black women and us being pumped up to think that 
we are the strongest. Having an education and a job is not, does not necessarily mean you have a successful life. I keep telling black women that to uh, raise a child, they say, well, I uh, provided with food, clothing, and shelter. That's not raising a child, that's maintaining one. To raise a child, you need a parental coalition of a man and a woman. We have sons who, are, by not having a father in the home, they don't know how to respect women. They take on the uh, black feminine, female emotionalism, emotionalism. They become bitchy, they're doubtful, they're indecisive, they can't make a decision. They don't know what to do about being a man, because we can't teach them that. We don't have that knowledge. We have daughters who grow up in a home where they don't see any affection, where there's no man there. They go out into the world and try to mate. They don't have no idea how to be no woman to no man, how to ma function in a house with a man, because they haven't seen it. Most of our children, just like us, get all the information we have about how you be with a mate off television. And I talk to brothers around this country, and I have testimonies and tons of letters from brothers who write and tell me that my book made them to decide to try to be a man again and try to have a woman. Now, if you think that's not an important work, I got black men who write me and say, you have made me decide not to have another white woman. I'm going to try to get back with the sisters and try them one more time. The good black woman has self-respect. She don't have to go out naked just to get the attention of a man. I have sisters all over the country and they, and they come up to me uh, after the lectures and they'll be talking to me and they'll say, well, you know, uh, all he think about is sex. All he think about is my body. I say, why don't you show him something else? <laughs> and then here's the really good one. They'll come up and they'll have on uh, uh, a weed. They have on false eyelashes, another whole face, false fingernails and all of that. And then they'll say, but I'm looking for a real man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout out to everybody that's down into the building here tonight. First and foremost, before we get this conversation started, welcome and thank you all so much for your love, for your support. Without the shares, without the views, okay, without your support, this wouldn't be possible. So number one, thank you to each and every one of you. We got a lot of people in the house here tonight, and we're going to, trust me, we're going to get this conversation going here tonight, all right? But first and foremost, there's going to be a lot of new people in here, so if you're unfamiliar with the channel, my name is Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, a little bit more affectionately known as MTR, okay? And the purpose of this channel is for critical thinking. It's for cerebral thought, dedicated for men, but we make accommodations for women as well with the goal of identifying solutions. But we understand that before you identify solutions, you have to identify the right problems and or issues and or opportunities, all within the goal to ensure that we live the most happy, joyous and successful life that we utmost and possibly can going into the future. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, thank you. So a couple of quick housekeeping notes before we get started with this conversation. Uh, for the first time, the channel membership 
is turned on. So to be able to participate in the chat, feel free to join as a channel member. And the real reason why I did this is to keep out any of the trolls or spam and things like that. So feel free uh, if you want to be a part of the conversation. And uh, also as well, I'm going to make sure time permitting, uh, I'm going to uh, look at some of the questions that are going to be coming in. And we're going to answer those time permitting at the end of the stream. We'll see how, how far do we get within the stream because you know, you, 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 you give the, uh, the queen the mic, she's going to cook. You understand what I'm saying? So time permitting, we will definitely get towards that. Uh, another housekeeping item, uh, the after party towards this discussion will be in my Discord, which is connected in through my Patreon link right down here. If you want to be a member of the inner circle, I think it's the most popping thing, the most popping community, inner circle community, this side of YouTube. If you want to improve in on yourself, your value, whether it be financial literacy, your purpose, what have you, join the inner circle. But the after party to this discussion will be down there we're gonna finish the conversation. Shout out to everybody that's coming through in the building. I'll bring the queen up in just one more minute. Couple other things as well, all right? So along with y'all guys' popcorn, get your notepads ready, all right? Get your notepads ready as well because the queen is in the building, AKA the maternal, paternal grandmother on the channel, all right? And she'll be here in a quick second. So real quick, I also just wanted to quickly chat about um, why this is so important to me. So if you notice, I named this stream the return of the Oracle, all right? Now, if you think of Oracle, that is actually a reference to the matrix. And the Oracle within the matrix was essentially the overseer of the entire environment. And the reason why I named that is because if you take a look at what was in this book, 30, Years ago, 30 years ago, predicting the things that we see here today, I think Oracle is a very fitting title for this live stream. You understand what I'm saying? So it is extremely important that we bring the queen up here to have this conversation. So shout out to everybody that's down into the building. But let's get this conversation started because it's time to get active. So without further ado, good evening. <laughs> good evening. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, praise be to Allah. I had a good back day. My back is not hurting. Listen, we, we are humbled. We are gracious. We are appreciative for your presence here today and especially that your back is not hurt so we can conduct this conversation. I know we were having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we figured them out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a long time coming. I know you've seen content on the channel. Um, I'm just so happy and glad that we can finally coordinate this conversation and really just do it for the culture. Yeah. So I know I had a little bit of an, uh, of an introduction in here. So for the audience, if there's anyone in here that maybe not know who, who you are, do you want to give a brief introduction of who you are? Well, I think you did a wonderful idea. And if you have been in America for the past 30 years, you know something about who I am That's and what I stand for because I don't have any competition. There's not another female on the front line that's out there who has worked to get the credibility that I have with our people and mm -hmm. who has written books at a price we can't afford and who has tried to get information out so that we can better ourselves instead of waiting on the enemy to come up with some kind of idea that's going to help us. We have to help ourselves. Awesome. Listen, and, and I wanted to talk about that as well, because I did put together that little bit of an intro. And, you know, when I think about and I've reviewed a couple of your public appearances back in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, and, you know, when you talked about your book, right, and the benefit that it was going to have on the black people. Right. And I salute you for your bravery in doing that. Right. So and even in my sp in the digital content creator space right now, we face a lot of opposition in the things that we talk about as well. So I just wanted to hear from you. What was it like going through that 30 years ago? Can you just speak about your experience? Oh, boy. It was rough. It was rough. And at the same time, it was exciting. You know, this meant that sometimes I would show up at a studio for an interview and there would be protesters outside with banners and flags and t-shirts, band Shahrazad Ali and things like that, you know, like this one. See, this is one I saved. 
Uh oh. <laughs> no way. They so so they gave that to you. They they handed yeah. it to you. <laughs> well, no, I had to send some of my people to go buy it. To go know? get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did that. Plus, you know, if it was the limo driver or the elevator operator, it didn't matter which black man it was. He was trying to get me to answer some question he had. Listen, mm -hmm. my woman doing this here, my child doing that. You know, to try to get an answer. So it was it was really an exciting, wonderful time. Our people were reading. They were on fire. A lot of black bookstores opened up just on the strength of selling the black man's guide. And uh, people had conferences. They would have conferences and wouldn't even invite me and go in there and deal with it, you know. But it was great because we were going into community centers and they, people were discussing and talking about issues. One sister told me, me and my husband had the first real conversation we ever had. We've been married 20 years. Right. And, so, and you know, this is a real issue that we've had. And it keeps, it comes back, I guess, about every generation. Someone will trigger it and kick it off and it'll go starting again. Now, what's interesting this time is that it's men and women mm -hmm. who are doing, you know, this talking because uh, our men, as a rule, just have not uh, been out talking about their relationships publicly. Right. And you talk about that in your book. I remember reading that. That's actually in the preface of the book, saying yeah. that we haven't had the, the voice right, to be able to speak about these things very authentically. So I, I gotta ask as well, because um, I think you're familiar with this section of YouTube of men now voicing their opinion of their relationships yes. with the black woman. So mm -hmm. I just gotta hear your, your, your thoughts of the information that you've seen thus far. Well, we have to be careful with that, especially when it's coming from men. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of men who are talking about us as black females out here, have a little bit more ulterior motives, even though a lot of their points, some of them are good, but some of the men sound like they have either been turned down by a woman or turned out by a man. And uh -oh. I'm not sure which one it is yet. So I just listen and just uh -oh. see, but it comes around, as I said, about every generation. Awesome. And, and let me also touch on this because, you know, and I, and I had the opportunity to go and read through the book and I read it from cover to cover. And I'll tell you what, like I'm looking at, I, I was reading through the book and it was like every chapter that I went through, I was thinking about another past dating relationship or something. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's why that happened. It was it was amazing. And so within the book and, you know, you've been criticized famously for the critique or, um, you know, just uh, speaking about the behavior right so yeah. um thinking through what that is right can you can you talk about um the importance of the co uh, of coexisting between the black man and the black woman um in the face of the modern feminism as it exists today well a lot of our behavior we haven't really made certain decisions about because so many things have been shattered of certain standards and values and mores that now it's difficult to ascertain what is considered bad mm. for us, what is considered good for us. And a lot of times when you bring up things that have historically been good for us, people say that's old school, that's old timey, and that they don't too much want to deal with that. They think we're living in a modern time where things have changed mm. and they have changed. But change don't mean better. Change just means different. Mm. So a lot of what we used to stand for and be with has changed for the worse. Mm. You know, and, and let's talk about that as well, because, you know, you were um, critiqued for, um, you know, essentially uh, labeling the black woman. And this is 30 years ago, and I can't believe it's, it's been 30 years, but as out of control. And you, and you mentioned that within the book. And then I look towards um, what we experience from like a content perspective today. And there's media out there that uh, women uh, put out and they seem to um, put on a pedestal the idea of being out of control or even calling themselves savages. Um, what, how do you feel about that? Oh, I, I think it's terrible. They even have clothing lines where mm -hmm. our little children and adults are walking around with the word, I'm a savage or I hate men and all of this kind of uh, stuff. It's very bad for us because we are really a face value people mm -hmm. and we accept a lot of things on imagery and words and things and we'll start to believe that and we'll wear that with pride only because it's a contemporary use of the language of something that's popular right now. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep our attention very long, but when we get onto something that, you know, it can be a bracelet, 
It can be the Ugg sneaker. It could be the Nikes. It doesn't matter. When we get hold to some white people's name or something that we think has a great value, mm. then we will accept that and be proud of that. But we are not what we wear. Mm. And that we've never dif differentiated that. We're not what we wear. It don't matter how many Pradas and Chanel's and all of that you wear. You ain't none of them white people. Mm. And they probably wouldn't hire you and give you a job. They wouldn't help your parents or your grandparents. And so I'm really against the brand name thing. And all of the brand names, I'd say 99% of them, are images of the enemy and their name and what they're doing. Mm. So that's not good for us. They ain't never had nothing good that they share with us. Mm. You know what? I'm so happy <laughs> that when you call that out, because I talk about it on the channel all the time about, you know, the... Um, uh, essentially being within the matrix if you know you predicate the value in your life based off of the things that you were buying especially if it's tied um, right. intrinsically to these companies that have nothing to right. do with you and nothing. or your culture it, it makes absolutely no sense to me and, and none at, at all I, and I've never gotten it <laughs> I've never gotten it and I talk about it all the time on the channel you know and, and I'm trying when I when I when I insert that bit of information it's like I'm trying to help people see that it is of no advantage to them mm -hmm. at all. Well, you know, when you're blind, you can't see mm. and you can't hear usually either. So it's difficult for somebody to hear the words that uh, mean that they're out of order or that they're doing the wrong thing and that all of the worlds have a joining on and that those decisions impact all of the other behavior they have in their life with their mate, their children and their parents and everyone. You know, this stuff is all connected, and that's how it was designed to be. When we finally learn something about the fact that our history was taken from us, you know, our clothes, our voting, I mean, in our world, our politics, and when even our disciplining our children, our food, no matter what it was, we didn't know we had a choice. We have just recently learned that we have a choice about God's. We thought we all had to have the only God, that picture they gave us of them. Mm. But we have a choice now. And just like we have a choice to choose our God, we have a choice to choose how we get along with each other. That's mm. a choice. It's not a given. It's not set in stone. It's just something that the people who hate us taught us to keep us separate so they can use us for a tool and a slave. Mm. She's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me also hit the conversation like this, is that, and I'm not sure how aware of you are of this, but there's been a recent movement of men that are, black men that are saying they don't want to participate in dating black women anymore. They, go, they do things and they say, you know, save yourself, black man, and, and you know, they might be traveling to other countries. Um, or just some are just, you know, completely going into hermit mode and just not dealing with black women at all. What, what do you say for those men that have lost hope in marrying the black woman? Well, I would say that that's the closest way to suicide if they really feel like that. See, because if there's no you, there's no me. There's no me, there's no you. I'm the only thing on earth that can reproduce you. OK, mm. in the cleanest form that's possible. And you are the only thing on earth that can impregnate me to create yourself. Mm. And so this idea that we're going to just quit each other and not seek a solution is just suicide. Our birth rates are already low. So at a time when we should try to be get along for more than one night, I'm not talking about no one night stand. I mean, in a regular relationship, uh, we should be trying to get along. We should be teaching our children to get along. See, my new market today, brother, is the children of the parents who I tried to reach 30 years ago. Mm. And so they didn't model for their children. They didn't teach them things. And so now their children are asking me and demanding from them, why didn't you tell me the truth about this? How come I didn't know anything about this? They too learned how to have a relationship from television, from the people that do not represent us and from just modern times, contemporary issues and stuff like that. But that's not anything that's going to save us. We are the only things that can save us, mm. ourselves. And it's not going to come through no food stamps, no grant, you know, no job. It's not going to come from any of that. It has to come through our change of behavior to each other. Mm. Listen, and the change of behavior, I mean, let's talk about it, you know, because you, you outlined it so well 30 years ago. Where do you think 
we've gone awry or gone astray. I mean, you've outlined some things and in your book, you detail it in depth. And it's just so amazing to me, like even some of the examples that you use in the book, and I kind of chuckled is, is when you when you took kind of a shot at Soul Train and you were talking about lewd dressing and behavior. And I'm over here reading Soul, I'm like Soul Train and I'm thinking back to my childhood. I'm like comparing Soul Train today right. to what the lewdness that we That's and right. the nudeness that we see today Soul Train type things today is on daytime television. Right. And let's not even forget about the internet, you know what I mean, with Twitter and Instagram, and it's hitting our eyes at super fast speed. So, I mean, do you have hope for where we're going into the future? Well, I think uh, the most difficult thing to do today, and this is about raising our children, the most difficult thing, now hear this, because this is serious, the most difficult job we have is to protect our children from premature sexual arousal. Mm. Okay? Because the, the society is so swamped with sexual innuendo, sexual suggestion, sexual pitches, activities, and they even have our little girls. I'm talking about three and four and five years old, dry rating, doing pelvic thrust doing all of this stuff on that claiming it's dancing like that little vulgar song by Cardi B uh oh that uh people are on there with their children the little girls have memorized that they singing it they dancing to it they doing gyrations like adults in strip clubs they are making faces like adults women this is mm. not good it's really bad you know but those are some of the things that are going on that we are teaching our children as if it was fun Mm. See, the word fun and happiness has not ever appeared in any holy book we had. The Bible, the Torah, or the Quran. Ain't no promise from God about no fun. We have to get things in order and then maybe we can have some peace. That's what we're striving for because that's the one thing we don't have. We don't have peace from our family. We don't have peace from the people around us. We don't have peace from the police, certainly not. We don't have peace from the military. We don't have peace. That's what we should be struggling for. Not for no so-called happiness that can change by the day based on whatever is happening or from the influx of drugs and alcohol. Oh. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> when, when, and, and when you speak, um, the first, one of the things that I think about is, you know, when I get callers that call in and we start to have a dialogue and a conversation when we go live, what I, what I often begin to notice is the short-term thinking of, me, 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 yeah. what's in it for me? And yeah. I think that it's so much bigger than that. I it think is. it's so much big. It's the healing of a community. That's and, right. and sometimes that healing, you have to discipline yourself within that. So you talk Ooh. about the, the, the perversion and, right. I talk, and, and I talk all, all the time to the fellas on this channel. And I say that there, you have to discipline yourself. Yes. And that's very difficult because most of our men have not had the example of another black man as an elder to teach them how to have discipline. And mm. this is why a lot of the sexual activities in our community are so rampant in all of the age groups. And I'm mm. talking about from little children going to school three or four years old to old people 80 and 90 years old. It never ends. It's just a constant drive of people seeking those few minutes to look for some kind of happiness and well-being and it don't last long enough to provide you with that in a long time you know you mm. old people used to say coming to play and coming to stay is two different things and so anybody can go out one evening when they don't know each other don't know anything about each other and to have uh some kind of interpersonal relationship sexually but the next day we don't even want to look at each other because that was the whole expression of what we think relationship is expression of a relationship and so it becomes difficult to find someone to mate with once again because we have not set up any standards mm -hmm. and we think that's something that anybody can do any kind of way they want to that's not true the fall of rome was not an event it was a long schedule of months and years of deterioration of all of the values and civilized tactics that created a nation and so it, it's not nothing that's instantly going to happen. It's been happening. It's been chipping away from us for these past 30 years. As you said, a lot of the things I put in my book, that's lightweight now. Yeah. It's different from what, you know, it is and what it's going to be in the future. The one word, the one word that you that you said in there that I wanted to focus in there is standards. 
standards, baselines, expectations. And it seems like today, more than ever, we have lost sight of those things. Um, I am keen to hone in on standards and expectations for the folks that watch the content on this channel, along with identifying toxicity in the people around as well. So I think that there's certain actors within the space that are trying, but I really, I really want to know from, from, okay. So like from when you release your book 30 years ago, okay. All of the knowledge that was within it, the wealth of knowledge that, that was in it. Do you think that between then and now, and I think I know the answer to this, that we've regressed or we've gotten better? Well, you know, the earth is spinning. And so things are changing all the time. New combinations of farming, you know, because it's not standing still. But a lot of us who have tried to hold on in certain places to certain standards or routines or certain uh, displays of civilization, uh, we've had a very difficult time because the competition of the greediness and gluttony of the media of white America has taken us and just grabbed us and they can pretty much make us do anything that they say. And I think it's getting worse. It's not going to destroy all of us because there is no beginning or ending of the birth of the black man on this mm. earth. Okay. So mm. it's not going to destroy all of you. We're never going to run out of men. We're not going to run out of women. We'll be the last people standing. If it ever gets to that point, uh, God made you first as the best example. And although you have been tampered with by an enemy who wants to destroy you and your seed, you still are the best. And no matter what happens, you're going to be the best. And I know you kind of mixed up because your mother didn't teach you right. And your father maybe didn't teach you right. But you are still the best that the earth has ever produced. And I thank you for that. And, and, and the thing is, when I hear something like that, he, hearing that message from you, I, it makes me just so... Um, wanting of so many more of our sisters to understand the things that you are saying in the comforting, in the loving way that you just described it. And often I see movements such as men are trash. There's podcasts that are formed around being a whore, so to speak. And that's literally the name of the, <laughs> the podcast. You talked earlier about the Cardi B right? And the creation of WAP, right? We're not going to get into the definition because we got to show you some respect. But these things are now so mainstream. Do you think that we'll be able to get away from, away from what is worldly today? And if so, what do you think will then be the catalyst going into the future? And are we on the right path right now? Well, I think uh, I'm glad you ended on catalyst because the catalyst is going to be the misbehavior and the savagery of our children, our boys and our girls. Mm. And so we, so while we as black women, we are walking around, you know, we uh, are very beautiful. We're very educated and the enticing beauty of women has destroyed many a man. Mm. But as we as black women walk around, we should look at the bad example we are setting for our daughters of all ages. We're teaching our daughters that they are not good enough. Now we're talking about the most beautiful woman on the planet earth, the mother of civilization, queen of the universe, the best God produced in a female. And we are walking around with some Indians hair on our head, uh -oh. some Asians eyelashes, uh -oh. you know, some uh, surgery to make our lips bigger. Talk to her. Uh, to get, put some big plastic balls in our breasts to make them bigger going under the knife to try to have the biggest buttocks out here. I mean, we're teaching the longest fingernails and even getting false nails on their toenails. Talk we're to teaching our girls that they are not good enough. And unless they have something from another nationality that they are not acceptable or desirable, that's wrong. And the ridiculous thing is all the things that you just mentioned, black men don't want it. Anyway, <laughs> I ask women, ask your man what he like. You know, have you ever heard any man talk, come up to you, I ask him and say, hey, I want you to give me some hair. No, <laughs> it's not important like that. See, you know, ain't nobody never asked me for no hair. And I've been out here a long time. So yes. when we look at what is going on, 
a lot of people are getting their little four and five year old daughters weaves in their hair. We even got brothers who are getting dreaded weaves into their head. The thing mm. is completely out of control. We don't know where the hair comes from, what it's mixed with, hair fall in the toilet, get held up in the car door, get on the table in the food. You know, if you're in the hospital, I hate it when those nurses come in there with all that fake hair on. And that's not the only way we're beautiful. Mm. That doesn't make us beautiful. It's expensive. It's taking money out of our communities. But this is the low self-esteem that we as adult black women have that now we have passed on to our daughters and granddaughters and make them think that they're not beautiful, that their fingernails are not even good enough unless they have somebody else's fake ones on. That is terrible. And our women need to deal with that while they run around with how great these sororities and everything is. Then you all to start making examples, good examples for our daughters and about their natural beauty. I'm not saying don't wear makeup. I'm not saying don't get your hair done and all of that. I'm just saying, stop adding false things onto our bodies, claiming that it'll make us more beautiful when we already have the title of the people who make these products as being the most beautiful woman on the earth. Everybody want to look like us. Everybody want to be you. I, uh, listen, and I, th and I think this needs to be said, you know, I think that, um, all of the fakeness pushes black men away. And yeah. that has to be that has to be said. I first never of all, first of all, you can't afford it. It uh -oh. costs money to keep all of that up. Them people not giving Maintenance. us that stuff free, and they don't even represent what they're selling us. They just want to make money off us. Everybody want to make money off us. One of the things the fathers can do with their sons is buy them a pair of hard bottom shoes. Take them somewhere once a month, at least, maybe. Uh, every other month where they have to wear hard bottom shoes that's one of the reasons that everybody call y'all a boy because you dress like a boy you're immature wearing kitty clothes yeah put some hard bottom shoes on it make you function differently you stand differently you walk differently and our boys need to do that give our boys a wallet don't let them wear their pants down it's a lot of things that we can do as the adults as the fathers can do you know teach your child how to write uh, address on an envelope. How about something simple as that? Teach your child how to write a check. Some basic things that they're going to need in life that we're not teaching them because we're buying them a Gucci belt. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, and I, I think it takes each and every one of us to recognize exactly what it is that you're talking about and then understand that we can make that change. Yeah. Right? You know, and I talk about, you know, on the, the, the importance of financial literacy, of investing, right? Not, not focusing on the, uh, the worldly items to put on your body for the short-term satisfaction, but what are the things that you could do to invest within yourself so that you can give back to the community through pure creation? That's so, right. So, so let me also uh, ask you as well. So we talk through um, the um, benefits of good child rearing. And I know like in the Patreon, group that I have. I was talking to some of the brothers back there and uh, we have a couple of single fathers. If, if you were to talk through um, any advice that you would give single fathers and also single mothers as well, right? Because right now in our community, which is, uh, I think we had about a 70 or 75% single uh, mother rate, which I think is higher than when you wrote your book 30 years ago. Yes. If you were to give any advice for those two populations, what would that advice be? Uh, it would probably, or it is, uh, to get your child involved with doing chores while it's still fun to them. Okay? Mm. So, you know, three, four, five years old, it's fun to do the dishes and take out the trash and dust and vacuum. Teach them to do that stuff while they're really small. And stop with this nonsensical goal about, I want to give them everything I didn't have. They didn't ask. It wasn't even available then. It don't matter. We need to give them what they need today to survive this enemy that's out here trying to kill them. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is what our goal should be, to tell them the truth. I have that other book, Things Your Parents Should Have Told You, which gives you certain ideas in there. And we don't really push personal hygiene anymore. So mm -hmm. our children stink. The little girls stink. The little boys stink. Teach them how to put on deodorant. Teach them how to... Uh, uh, plant a seed even if it's just in a flower pot teach them some basic things uh teach them to carry a wallet teach the girls to uh put on their deodorant 
and how to take care of their vagina. You know, these things are not being taught that schools relieve it on the parents and most parents don't have time. So what we need to do is to stop our mothers from trying to compete with the 16 year old girls by dressing like them and acting like them and sit down and teach your own child how to be a civilized adult. The purpose of education is not to learn. The purpose of education is to civilize the people. Our children are not getting the proper education from the enemy. They ain't never gonna get it from them. That's not their job to teach our children the truth. We have to teach our children the truth. We have to tell them who the enemy is. We have to read to our children every night. If you read to your children, child every night, well, nobody has to teach it to read. It'll start reading on its own. But we got to put that time in. We don't have but a little time left after working. And the farther away from home a woman works, the more the family suffers. Mm. And so we're dealing with that too. So we don't have to slow it down. We set the time. They not setting the time. It don't matter if they back it forward or whatever they want to do. We set the time by what we do. The world watches us. We set the time of what to wear, how to dance, what to buy. We set it. So we can set the time any way that we want to, to have some minutes for our little children so we can teach them how to survive this hell in North America and the enemies who are operating it. Our culture is clearly in disarray. Right. We've already established yeah. that and we're trying to change it. But let me ask from your opinion, who should be leading the charge, the black man or the black woman? Well, it's going to have to be the black man. Ain't nobody scared of the black woman. All that woofing we do. And it's just a lot of talk to get attention. It's not you know, worth anything. Uh -oh. And so our men are going to have to lead it. There is going to come a time. I keep saying this not getting along is a luxury. But there's going to come a time that we're going to get along. And women who you thought would never pay any attention to you will be talking to you and giving you the eye, okay? So y'all just be a little more patient. It's coming because we have to rely on you for protection. I'm talking physical protection now because the enemy is treating our women like they're treating our men. They'll throw our women down and stop them or shoot them just like they do y'all. So this thing, we can finally got equality on that, okay? So they're attacking us the same way. So what we have to have is a man to come in and help protect our food. We might have to have a man to go get us some food. And so all of that, but I don't like him because of this and I don't like him because, oh, we will, that's going to change. But so many are being lost while we're waiting on that change to come about. So many of our people are being lost. Uh, I'm not even sure what the future is going to bring on that because so many people are destroying themselves and uh, so many of us have the values so messed up that we actually think that good sex means it's a good relationship. Uh-oh. Talk to him. And that's not true. We get some um, we get some uh, mama's cooking here today. Listen, so let me <laughs> and I know exactly what it is that you're talking about cuz when the covid started, man, I was getting some weird DMs, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I was getting some weird some weird DMs like, Listen. "Oh, okay." You know we're lonely and desperate. We just don't want anybody to know it. So we hide behind our big job, our big car, our credit card, and all those different things. But listen, we are lonely, and I'm going to tell you what a lonely woman won't do. Y'all can have anybody you want because everybody's available, okay? And all of this about I don't want no man unless he got a good credit rating, unless he right with the Lord. And all of this foolishness that we have made up to explain why we are not with a man. Not because of whatever values and standards we have shut up. You know, so many women tell me, I ain't met nobody to meet my standards. I say, you don't even meet them. And nobody, you're not going to meet that. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. People are attracted to people that are more similar in their values. And so we have to teach back again our children certain standards and values so that they will be attracted to that. Mm -hmm. As opposed to going out and getting somebody laying in the gutter, talking about I love them, I feel sorry for them, I can help them. We have to help self. That's not being selfish, but you have to help self first so that you are strong enough mentally and physically to help anybody else. And that includes our children. Mm -hmm. It would make our children love and respect us more if we say stop running the streets or going to the club or sitting up getting high with them or drinking all the time. Mm -hmm. Even though that's what's happening, that's not what they want for us. And it's like a man. He don't want his woman doing certain things or dress in certain ways. And every time we go out and dressing really overly sexy, we're putting our man's life in danger. 
Mm. Because if somebody say to us out of order, say something to us out of order or wrong, then his manhood say he got to step up and defend us over nothing, over some foolishness. And if you got a man and you satisfied and happy with him, then why are you going out trying to entice new men? Mm. And Make the more clothes, the more clothes a woman take off, the more desperate she is. That don't mean she bold and brave and want to get with somebody. That means she's desperate. And that's a cry. Please give me some attention. Please look at me. Say something. Do something. That's what that is. And that's the condition of many of us. That's not anything that's an insult. We're talking reality. We have got to deal with the reality of our lives so that we can make corrections. But making up all of this stuff and then have them uh, conferences where ain't nothing that but black women. Right. Yeah. And the, uh, some of the people that used to be against me and mm -hmm. even some of the new people that's out. If you don't have any track record, if you don't have any proof that you have had a good relationship or are in one, then don't come out trying to tell me how to have one when yours failed. Uh oh. Now that's my only position about that. Okay. And that's you don't a good have position. the authority to tell me how to fail, too. I mean, what have you got for me? Uh oh. And so we have to look at those kind of things, too. You have to have credibility. And I think that's why I have lasted all these years because all of the people who listen to me teach, I haven't changed my teachings because we haven't changed our behavior. It's yep. not time to change yet. And they'll tell me, yeah, but that's old school. Yeah, you used to say that. Well, we used to do it and we're still doing certain things that mm -hmm. are deteriorating and destroying our homes and making our own children grow up and kill us. That's mm. new. Mm. Whoa. Listen, we talk about, um, I'm try, let me try to paint this picture for you, is because you talk about all of these worldly things that are happening that, you know, um, tools that are being set up, such as like Instagram, and, you know, we see yeah. that happening in a way. And to your point, I agree with you. I think that, and I've talked about this on a channel before, is that there are men that get into relationships with women, and, but it seems as though the women are still dating the internet because of the way that yeah. they carry and that they hold themselves. And I also asked you a little bit earlier in terms of who should lead the charge. And I, so from a man's perspective, you said, you said men. So, but I guess, how do we make that clear that there's worldly things that are being set up? There's those without receipts, right? That are communicating to them the way that they should live their lives, right? And there's tools that are set up. There's a media engine put in place to pander because they understand who's going to be making the majority of the purchases. That's right. So, so, so with all of that being said, who can help get the message through to our counterpart, my counterpart? Yeah. Well, actually, it still has to be the man. And it has to be probably in the bedroom because that's about the only time you get a lot of our attention. Uh oh. So, I'm thinking that it would have to be the man in that in that way to uh, the white man has been very successful at educating us into thinking that we know more than you, and that we're better than you, and that he can come to us and get whatever he needs. He'll skip mm -hmm. over you to get to us, to sell us something, as you said, or to explain something to us or put us in a new system that they want us to be in. But we're going to have to look at ourselves. And I know it's difficult because so many of our men, uh, they've been mixed up so long and they're so off track, but that's not all of them. Mm. And that's how we get around to when I teach that we only have two choices. If you're going to be with a man, you're going to be the woman or the other woman. The other woman is not a mistress. That's just your other woman. Uh oh. And, and they mad all, at that. You know, that would settle many of you down if you could just acknowledge that and stop the sneaking and hiding and ducking and lying and running from here to there. We don't have a lot of time for our life because we're so busy checking your cell phone, emptying your pockets, smelling in your car. You uh -oh. know, we just spend our life being the FBI <laughs> instead of taking time to enjoy the relationship we're in and stay in your lane, which if you're going to be the one, the wife, then go be a wife. That's a good thing to be. And if you're going to be the other woman, then be that. None of that requires any fighting and cussing and calling up people on the phone and just being totally savage. It, that doesn't require that. Mm. No woman is going to have just one man by herself. 
Not because I said so, but it's because how history has been. Go back. How many trillions of years you want to go back before we look at the fact that there's never been a black man on the earth who only loved one woman? Mm. So it's not like he's keeping something from us. It's something, ladies, that's not available. Okay? It's not the deal breaker. It doesn't have to be. And women break up all the time with men. He cheated on me. Who taught us that? Where did we get those ideas from? Mm. And how does sex become the only deal breaker? If my husband had went out and blew his check, oh, we're going to rock and roll that night. Because that's important to the establishment and the main maintenance of the family. But if I just hear about or somebody say, hey, your husband was so-and-so, my question, did you give her any money? Okay, uh -oh. And if he didn't, then we just move on past that. Yeah? It doesn't have to, that's not the deal breaker. It's got to be something much worse than that. It Absolutely. should be. But we have set it up that sex is the final thing. Oh, if he be with somebody else, that's it. Now, why should a woman rob her children that she already got by this man of their father's attention and affection, his presence, and of the house, the car, whatever it is they're sharing? Why should she give all of that up? Why would we do that? Just because he went out or got somebody else, as long as he taking care of me. And as I say all the time, ladies, let's be honest, don't no woman want to be bothering no man 24-7 anyway. We got too much to do. You know, he needs to go and take a break or do whatever men do, but leave here and then come back. Now, that's the truth of that. But we don't want to acknowledge that because we're so busy trying to keep up with you to make sure you're not with no other woman or that she getting something more than what we get. Mm -hmm. Those are what our issues are. It's just some insane jealousy. Jealousy. Women, original women when i say original i mean from our black culture women have understood about this have known about it and as i said it's in all of the holy books so who are we in 2021 america where every kind of filth as possible is practiced going to come along and say i might do anything i might be a savage in the street i'm being on the, i'm stripping on the pole i'm a whore out at night but don't cheat on me that's the final thing that's ridiculous. It makes no sense. None. It doesn't. It just doesn't make any sense. So you're not keeping anything from us if you have another woman at some point. Now, some men need to have two women. All right? Just like some women want a baby, other women need a baby. Mm. All right? There are people like that. But a lot of uh, us as females, that's not the worst thing. We've gone along with that a lot in a lot of different situations and either turn our head or pretend we don't see it or whatever. It just depends on how much we into the man. Now there's one thing that's getting real popular on the internet right now. I know this brother, and that's this thing about polygamy. So you got a lot of different men and women on there advertising. Uh, I wanted this and everything. They ain't never going to get with nobody to practice no polygamy doing that. Because it's the woman that has to be into the man, number one, before any of that happens, or he expand their family base. It ain't never going to be just a bunch of people getting together and saying, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to all live together. But there's a lot of black men who think that that's going to be a big opportunity for a threesome or a foursome or whatever it is that people do in these days. They think that that's going to be some big sexual party. And I'm telling you all, you try to live with them, anybody, especially a bunch of, of women, because we got so many issues. We're so insecure. We just got so many problems that we need a man to help straighten out for us. Not no therapist. We need our own man to help us straighten it out. Now, it comes into the fact that since there's not enough qualified men, and when I say qualified, I don't mean just financially. I mean in the brain. Qualified to reason and think and deal and raise and make decisions. It's so few men that are qualified for that which is why if we find a good man like that, you need to get a number and get in line and hope he'll include you. I appreciate that you explaining that the way that yeah. you did, because <laughs> it, it's clear if you look at numbers regarding cheating and relationships and marriage, something is amiss. Yeah. <laughs> something is not working. It's something not working. is... And it's like, we have tried to rewrite history. You're not going to. You can't beat nature. You can't do it. 
and if this is the nature of the black man to have and love more than one woman and listen if it was a man like that i would have him mm. but he's not available so we got to pick from what's the best of what we think is available mm. none of us want to be bothered with anybody 24 hours a day seven days a week everybody need time for their own life to think to explore to share we need time for self and so if that means he step off to be somewhere else temporarily mm. our insecurity is based on father hunger and many of us have that father hunger even our men have it we want our daddy i keep saying this is what we want and we want that attention any way we can get it and we have learned that bad behavior is rewarded with attention and so if we act a fool then somebody gonna give us some attention we don't care what kind of attention or what the source of it is just give me some attention okay mm. and so we live that kind of life a lot of times then it's just based on loneliness or i need this or need that so you got to have a man that can spot that before it explodes and service our needs. All of our needs are not sex. That's what we've told ourselves because we're desperate. But all of our needs are not based on any kind of sex. Our mm. needs are based on emotional support. Mm. Talk to them. It's it's almost as if the society or the culture in America has convinced black women to prioritize monogamy over family. Right. Exactly. Now that's really great. You got it. That's exactly what they've done. And listen, they lying. They don't practice that themselves. Facts. You know, their ancestors say King Henry had 29 wives. I mean, Talk to them. Stuff. They don't <laughs> practice that. And they pushed it on us who are from a culture that never practiced that. Where where did that where did that come? You know, I kind of I I, br I blame the fantastic R and B songs back in the eighties and the nineties. They made <laughs> they made monogamy sound fantastic. I, I mean, I also blame Disney. I, I you know I blame you know in the movies. There's a lot of things that it comes from. But, well, but why why do you think it, it is? It's, it's all intentional. But, but why though? Like why would monogamy be pushed? I, I just don't because understand. They it. know can't nobody practice it. And so if anything would break us up, it would be worshiping monogamy, finding out it didn't work, and splitting up our relationship. See, now that has a lot of different levels because then you're taking the man out of the home, financial support, you're taking the man away from his children, which means they're going to grow up and act a fool, certainly. And then you're taking the protection away from the woman, which puts her back on the street trying to do for self and handle affairs that men should handle. Mm. So it's a lot of benefits if they want to repress a people and making sure that they're broke up. That's one of the reasons they took me off television. Now, at first, when I was on, and the book came out in March 1990, when I came on, uh, and that was this book. Y'all know that book, right? When I first came uh -oh. on with that one. I yeah, got one. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, I was on all the shows, everybody's shows. You know, they made fun of me because I did everybody in it, every magazine, newsweek, whatever it was, I did it, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to get the message to the people. I didn't go and ask them. They came and asked me because of how my reading public was behaving. They wanted to find out, well, what is going on? Because black people were pulling away from them. And as I said, having meetings and conferences at each other's house, at community centers to discuss their relationships. And so after they fussed with me, for months and everything, when they saw that black people were really trying to come together to try to talk about how they get along, how to be better women and how to be better men, they pulled me. They took me off because the enemy does not want the black man and black woman in America to be together as a family. Mm. They want to take our best men and lock them up. And the rest of them, they give a disease of different kind for years. Well, well, listen. They well, even you, teach us how to kill them through what we cook and feed them. If we do that. Oh, we gotta we gotta talk about the cooking thing real quick. But but I wanted to touch on what you just said because back then they had the power to pull you. Yeah. Now, we're creating our own platforms, which is why this conversation is so special. Yeah. That's why. That's and, why. You know, I don't ask people to go out and join nothing. Don't go out and farm nothing. You already got a unit. It's them people that you live in that with or who you supposed to be living in that with. You hmm. already got children or there's children in the neighborhood. 
you know, take those children, teach them how to be a volunteer. Sports is not enough. That's not enough to raise a child. Certainly it helps use up some of that energy they have, but you got to put them in different clubs and different organizations and take them with you and stop counting on other people to educate our children. They don't love our children. Mm. Most of them don't love their own. So why would we give our most precious, the best thing that we have, our seed, our reproduction, why would we turn that over to somebody who we know for a fact hates us and want to kill our men and our boys? It makes no sense. But I'm talking about the deterioration of thought patterns based on living with an enemy for these 500 and some odd years. <clears throat> Our queen is cooking here today. Woo! <laughs> you are cooking. Could we touch on the food thing? Because I'll I tell you what, I, I get I get so triggered, right? <laughs> when I'm when I'm out and I'm dating. And I asked the food, the cooking question, which to me is so important. The nourishment, yeah. the That's nourishment why you can't is. So, ask it. I can't ask it anymore because I get the <laughs> look, <laughs> and, I'm, and, 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 and I just don't understand it. So, 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 can you help? Can you help um, speak about the importance? Well, it, it certainly food is what sustains life. Okay. Uh, you can live off a drop of water a day for about two weeks. But you're not going to live no time eventually without food. You have got to eat. It determines sometimes whether or not we have heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, all of the things that we as black people, certainly high blood pressure, are known to have from a bad diet. Nobody ever taught us don't eat so much salt. Nobody mm. ever taught us don't eat so much bread and rice. Until uh, the Army Elijah Muhammad taught us in How to Eat to Live, book one and book two, and Dick Gregory. That was it. Mm -hmm. Nobody taught us about food. The food is connected to health and life and everything. And while black women talk about they don't want to cook, most of us are overweight. So we're eating somebody's food. All I'm saying is that start cooking some for your own man or some man and for your children so that they will get the proper nutrition so that when they get 21, they don't have diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and heart disease. Because mm. if you don't eat properly, if we don't change that paradigm of how badly we have been taught to eat, we think eating pork is a cultural dynamic. We think that's something to be proud of. Eat some hog. Oh, I'm going to fix the ribs. That's the only time we have unity. Let's have a block party and all get together and eat all the pork we can. Mm. You know, it's terrible. We haven't taught our children to drink water. Many of them are going to have kidney problems. There's a lot of issues that the people who have come into our community don't care nothing about us. They don't care. They just want to make money off us and use us for a tool and a slave. I can't say that enough. And I have mm. the other book, Are You Still a Slave? Which helps you identify how many behaviors are you still practicing that we was forced on us in slavery. And we still doing it now, even without a slave master. Mm. By and, choice. You know, we're 17 generations up from slavery and three fourths of our behavior every day is based on what happened to us then. We're still doing it. It's just a repetition. We caught up in it. This is why I, re I refer, I, I referenced you as the Oracle because you see it, you see what's happening and you've been saying, saying it for decades. You've been saying it for decades. You've been saying it for decades and it's just, you, you know what? And let me also, uh, ask this question as, as well, just slightly switching gears, okay? Because when I talked about, when I opened up this stream, I talked about the things that I see in this book, the things that I have read in this book, yeah. it is miraculous how many of this exists today. If you were to rewrite a new chapter for 2021 and the things that you've seen for the past 20, uh, 30 years, what would that new chapter be? I probably would just discuss the deterioration of our standards and values. See, mm. we're aging out of this. The old, us old heads, we're aging out. And so that means there won't be but a few people left who can talk about civilization, proper mm. behavior, proper language, respect. Respect has so many definitions. Now you can't even discuss what respect is because everybody got a different definition where there was a time when we had a certain list of definitions and that's what that meant. As I said, we just don't have the standards anymore. 
and nobody's trying to find them. Everybody wants the freedom to do whatever they want to do, which has never been successful in cleaning up or building a nation. We can't have no society where everybody do what they want to do. That is not what freedom means. We need to be teaching our children, even if we just do it weekly. I've been saying this for years. I've been talking about you need to teach your child one day a week. If the sisters can rotate, bring in three or four children, teach them their history. Because you better believe that the white people are teaching them their history. See? And they're not white, and they ain't never going to be, and they're going to have to live up under this germ. And so they need some information about how to survive. Mm. And that's our job as the parent. It ain't our job just to dress them and make sure they got the right shoes or go to the right camp and get the driver's license, the right car, go to the right college. You got black children matriculating this year all out there. What, getting ready to go out and beg the enemy for a job? Mm. We don't have nothing for them. You know, mm. we should be at least discussing these things. What can we do? And then we don't want our children to get caught in the rent trap. The reason that a lot of white parents, if they can afford it, when their children get married, they give them a house. They give them a house because yes. if you ain't worried every day about paying the rent once a month, your brain is free for you to think and advance into other things. Absolutely. But we're caught up in the rent trap. So all we do every day is prepare to pay the rent on the first. And the moment we pay it, we got to start working on the next month's rent. And so we are never free from we got to pay the mortgage. We got to pay the rent. We need some land. We need some earth. If it ain't got no house on it, try to get a piece of land. Have something that we can call our own as much as we can in this wicked society. I love that you touched on that because if we focus so much, I don't know if you're familiar with like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but like if we focus so much on the bottom rung, the food, the shelter, That's the, right. the, the basic necessities, if we just, if, if, if we're just focusing on that, then there's no time to push forward. There's Anything. no time for growth. You can't do nothing. We just deal with the rent. <clears throat> and and so you're... many of our people are homeless because they don't know how to get together. They can't stand to be around each other enough to get together so they can maybe live together. Maybe they can rent a whole house and everybody put in $50 or $20, whatever they got. But we have got to interrupt this rent trap because it is keeping us back. They used to call it the brain drain. Mm. But all of us keeping us back and we're teaching our children to perform the same slavery jobs, you know, all that leaf raking, boot dusting, that's over. We have got to produce some children who can see that that's not their limitation and that they are the ones who built this universe and that they can go forward and do other things. And now everybody wasn't kings and queens. There's no society where everybody's been a king and everybody's been a queen. There's Talk no to them. Uh-oh. Uh, but there's a few that's been out there and the rest of the people in the society and in that community has got to do their part to keep the place upright and everybody can succeed. There's a hierarchy, and I yes. love that you said yes. that. Yes, it's that pyramid that y'all keep talking about you love so much. <laughs> There's a hierarchy, and the hierarchy is important. But yes. I love the way that you talk about it because it's talking about our people from a position of power. But there's been decades of leading a life from a position of inferi in inferiority. Right. So, so I love the way that you are able to bring that up. I love the way let me so I have a couple of questions that came through as well um, I had a question that just came in this is one of the super chats my question as a husband and a father worried about my sons and daughters future companionships how can we rebuild the black community without traumatic truths getting in the way what is a traumatic truth what's she talking about it's, I mean are we talking about the killing of our men in the street that was pretty traumatic I don't know what she's talking about. Tell her to rephrase that question and ask again. Okay. Whoever sent in that super chat, rephrase that, ask it again, and we're gonna get we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. Okay. And and let me and let me also ask a side uh, question, right? So when when you um, started um, your tour, you did it from a book perspective, and obviously now with the internet, you know uh, we have other ways to talk and yeah. speak this message. Would you ever consider? your own YouTube channel or your own platform to be able to directly speak to all of us? I don't know. You know, I look at, I like technology, you know, but it's a double-edged sword because like the cell phones that y'all have, 
the cell phones have been responsible for breaking up more relationships than we could ever do on our own. Facts. So that hasn't been the best thing in technology. And even sometimes on that internet, because it has given a lot of our women an opportunity to go on that naked, uh, you know, do a strip or whatever it is they think to get attention. And uh, that's been bad, you know, and it certainly has allowed our men to go on and dance and clown around like that. So I'm not really uh, sure that I would be suitable for that. I might be too old because I don't speak the same language as you all do. And my priorities are a little different at this stage. So I'm not sure that they would want me on the everyday thing. I have to do this in a sparse way because y'all can't take it. <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's true that we can't take it because there's almost 9,000 people in the building right now and <laughs> who are fiending for your knowledge, fiending for your wisdom. I think, you know, and maybe every day is not realistic. This is what's happening, brother. We have got to make a change, even if it's a little change. And mm. I'm not talking about that going up in the church every Sunday. Oh, I love the Lord. No, you don't. Uh oh. You living with the Lord. You know him. You see him on the street. The black man is in the image of God. He might be the closest to God you ever get. So mm. we need to look at him in that way sometime. And it's not devaluing us because we reproduce God. Try to find you a man who believes he is God. It's okay. Mm. Who don't want no woman? Who don't want no man, rather, who believe he got? I don't want no man who don't believe he got. No, mm. believe that. You in the image of God. They describe you. You've been lost to the knowledge of yourself by this wicked beast that's been over us. But you can still take on the right attitude. You can take on the right behavior that'll make us respect you again. But our respect for you cannot come from nothing that white people made up. Let me also talk again, because you talked about something extremely important in regards to receipts. And you've had a lot of detractors over the past several decades. One of those actually put into the introduction, uh, Ayanla Van Sant. And the reason that I put that in is because when she addressed you, I think, was it R Ronaldo? I, it might have been, uh, I think it was Ronaldo. When she addressed you, it was much different than we see from what she talks about today. How do you think about that? Well, uh, I think once again, I think that if the people are gonna talk about how to heal or have relationships, then they ought to show us. They should have something to show us. And uh, back then and during that time, Yala didn't have no man and she didn't have no successful situation to tell us what she learned so she could do this and that. And I'm not sure if she had one now because that's not my business, okay? I but I really like people to have some history, to have mm -hmm. some credibility. She went all up in Essence Magazine and put me in there, asked me had I lost my mind. They was all mad. Well, a lot of our sisters took on certain reactions because they wanted the approval of other sisters. Mm. See, they wanted other women to say, yeah, girl, you did good. You against her, we against her, okay? When actually... A lot of the women who back then in the 90s, including her, who used to say things against me, have come around. And the women write me and say, I used to not understand you. I was young. See, so you remember now, the women who was 30 then is 60 now. Okay? The women who, okay, was 40 then is 70 now. Okay? Yeah. And so they've had to relook at it. They say, sister, you right. I wish I had done that. And then they say, I, my daughter got married. I bought her a book and I told her, you better read this before you get married. So I'm saying I have really been vindicated in that way, you know. Yes. And I'm thankful to Allah for that because I worked hard to do this. And I uh, sell my books on eBay to get a few dollars to keep this campaign going. This is my ministry. Mm. Okay, because, you know, I got this bad back. I can't take it on the road like that anymore. But some mm. of the technology... And that's why I picked you, because I liked you, and I thought you were talking right, and uh, you had your head on straight so I could come. I don't just do shows. You know, they ask me to do shows every day, yeah. everybody. You name them, they don't ask me to do the show. But I'm, I'm not like that. You know, I'm not just trying to do shows. I'm trying mm -hmm. to teach. Yes. And I'm trying to have the platforms that I can do the teaching on, not just to try to have some kind of notoriety and all of that. I'm not interested in that. But my, And I try to stay in my lane. 
I, I talk about what I would like to see black men do. But I can give instructions to black women because I'm a black woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother. I'm a sister. I'm a aunt. I'm a grandmother. And, you know, I just had my great grandson. Congratulations. And great grandson. Is, his name is Shabazz Saladin Ali. Okay. Congratulations. Thank That's you. wonderful yes. I news. Can't, I can't believe this. I didn't live long enough to have a great grandson. Oh, that must be a <laughs> long time. <laughs> that means you did something correct. <laughs> <laughs> That that's exactly what that means. And and I appreciate that. And I appreciate your words. Yeah. And I had to I wanted to make sure to to ask that question because I find it um incredibly enlightening that you use the specific words in your book out of control. And then yeah. when I played that clip, literally she said out of control to yeah. Essence magazine. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, you know. So but I'm not mad at her about that, you know. She done sucked up to enough people to get a show and, and make uh -oh. money and do what she's doing, you know, and so have a lot of people. And uh, that's okay with me because anything Allah got for me, I'm going to get it. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not hating on anybody in regard to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I don't like it when the sisters say they're stripping or whore hopping in the streets when mm -hmm. they say, yeah, but I'm paying my bills. That's not good enough to go there. As <clears throat> I said, we have little people watching us. Mm. And don't think that they're going to forget the stuff that they're seeing our women do and our men do. You know, if we stop chasing a man, maybe he can find us. It may not be everything we want, but the ultimate goal in relationship finding is companionship. Mm. Somebody to be with us. Come by and check on us. Hang the picture for us. Change the tire for us. Sit down at the table for us. We want that kind of stuff. We don't want a lot of things that we're making up that we love, mm -hmm. you know. And when you meet a beautiful woman and she's 45 years old talking about she's still looking for a relationship, hey, there's 360 million people in America. And if you can't find nobody out of 360 million, you might need to look at self. Absolutely. And looking at self requires the magic A word that we talk about in this channel day after day, time after time, content creator after content creator, and that is accountability. Oh, yeah. Woo! Can you, can you highlight why is accountability so reviled amongst uh, our black women? Is, is that something that might sound like, I'm sorry, I was wrong, or mm. you was right? Yes. It's anything like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Listen, I didn't eat so much crow. It's the one that I can still talk because I've been wrong so many times. I so now I'm in here saying I'm wrong to my grandchild. You know, <laughs> I mean, I've been wrong, and but you can be wrong and grow. It don't mm. mean we're gonna self destruct. It's mm. okay. I say all the time, just let y'all win. Sometimes mm. you have to choose your battles. It's okay. Uh. You will learn, and I'm giving you all a heads up on this. You will learn as you mature that a lot of the arguments and hassles that we chose that broke us up and made us lose time for two and three weeks or whatever from being with each other are things that really don't matter at all. Mm. They don't have a kind of value we have ascribed to them, and it still set a bad example in front of our children. Mm. We need to have our men talk to our his little daughter about clothes that are for men and clothes that are for women. Mm. We need them to do that with our little boys and little girls. We need to talk to them about behaviors, how a man stand, how a woman stand. We have a lot of those things that we need to deal with. As I said, these are not things we need to get past this time to tie. We way past how to teach the boy to tie a tie. He's got to learn some other things now. And we got to teach them to be responsible for their own fertility. Not count on somebody else to have birth control. You have yours if that's what you're gonna do. You know, it's a lot of lessons we need to be teaching. You know, when I grew up, they had a thing called charm school, and it was for the girls. And the girls would come into charm school and learn how to sit with a skirt on, how to get in and out of a car. See, we don't have anybody teaching that now. Now Cardi B is teaching charm. Uh oh. Then talk to them. We and don't need our girls to learn from her. Mm. And we don't need our uh, children to grow up thinking that all they have to do is to go to church 
and that they're going to be okay. That's not enough. That idea has fizzled. That is not enough. And I was getting ready to talk to the little Black Panthers group. You know, I've known them for a long time. And many of us make mockery of them because there's only a few of them now or because they may make a few mistakes in the media or whatever. But we don't need to mock the Black Panthers. Mm. That at one time was the only, other than the FOI in the Nation of Islam under the tutelage of the Army Lines Muhammad, we only had two groups in the community that we could count on to protect us. Mm. That's not anything to laugh at or make mockery of. We should honor those brothers that are still trying to hold on to that. So what I was going to tell them is that we need to start back, and all of y'all need to hear this, start a rite of passage program in your area, even if you have to do it in your church or your community center or in your garage. Start another rites of passage program where you can teach and train the different young people about different things, about growing up and taking that step into another stage of livelihood and of age and the times and what must be done at that point. But we need that. We don't have those anymore. A lot of things that we used to do that were working. The enemy managed to make us make fun of it, mock it, or destroy it. Mm. So we need to do something about that. That is something that we all can do. It's a brother. I can't even remember his name. I hate that. But it's a brother that's some, uh, oh God, I can't remember his name. But anyway, see, when you get old, you forget a lot of that stuff. <laughs> but uh, it's a brother, and he says that... Uh, he is teaching the young boys how to change the oil in the car, how to change a tire, different things. And then there's another brother in North Carolina. He is a, called the Gentleman's Club. And he is teaching the boys how to dress up in a suit one day a week and how to put on the bow tie and a white shirt and how to act like a man, a young man. Mm. These people need support. The children are not going to go to camp no more and that's enough for their development because everything that's available is teaching some kind of idea. We have to investigate what that idea is. And if it's not the right idea we want for our children, then you start an idea. We all competent. All that got to go to the club every weekend and every night or whatever. That ain't necessary to live. Right. And if you at home really taking care of your family and your man, you ain't got time for no long fingernails. And that, what you just brought up, the fingernails, the trips to the club, that's the short-term personal selfish investment into themselves, which doesn't help the community at all, but the long-term investments, right? No, donating to those that are standing up these programs. That's right. That are doing something. That's, that's right. important. And that's what can start to make a difference. That's right. Awesome. So, so listen, uh, uh, sister, I want to be extremely respectful of your time. Uh, there's a couple of other super chats that, that came in. Do you still have time? Yes. yes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Let me, <laughs> let me take a look at some of these. Um, can you touch on the topic of black women saying they are unprotected and the implication it has on black masculinity? Well, a woman has to be in a position that she can be protected. Uh-oh. A woman has to deserve protection by the way she live her life or present herself. Talk to her. A woman has to require protection because she is in her place, in her <clears throat> lane. And then men might feel that they can step in and protect her. A lot of our women don't want to be protected. <clears throat> You can't protect them whether anybody bothers them alone. Sometimes we try to protect our women from a bad idea. She don't want no protection. So there's no situation where a man that don't know a woman can walk down the street and see somebody doing something to her and automatically just jump in. Mm. So that has to be an individual choice and it has to be a situation where the woman is in order not out there cussing, jumping up in men's face, screaming and hollering, acting a fool, trying to act like she a man. And then when some other man deal with her like she a man, then she want you to jump in and save her. It don't work like that. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. It, it absolutely <laughs> now, doesn't. And you have to be careful because black women will book a fight for you and walk away. Yeah, early, right? <laughs> how, how many of our black men are in jail right now because of, a, of situations right. like that? And I know a lot of brothers who are taking time for sisters. Mm. So, you know, we need to uh, uh, watch that. They get them in trouble. They call themselves being a man, taking the, you know, the, the weight for the problem, and then she gone. 
Mm. He in jail. Mm. So we have that situation. And we have a lot of sisters where the brothers have tricked them out of their money. Okay, now let me say this. If we are happy with a man, we don't care nothing about no money. So don't believe that lie. Mm. You know, that he got my money and we would give him some more if he was treating us like we wanted to be treated or taking care of our children emotionally like we want. Mm. See, those are our requirements. It, it's a lot of things we make like it's important in the end. But what is a few dollars to certain happiness? Mm. See, that's how that is. Money don't mean nothing in that way. It really doesn't. And I try yeah, to push yeah. that on the channel so much that, it, you know, if you look at our, our our media today and they, you know, they push all right. of this money, this, they got money up to their ears. And you know, men, excuse me, men have to be careful because a lot of times when a woman get with a man and she start buying him a lot of stuff, his shoes, his sneakers, you know, chains, tattoos, a whole lot of stuff. You got to be careful about that because a lot of times women do that so they can own a dude. Mm. And then a lot of times if we get mad at you and fall out, we say, give me all my stuff back. Mm. So you got to watch, you know, it's a slippery slope in there, but it can be worked out. Whew. So I guess thinking through this financial component, because a lot of what we hear today, uh, based off of what you're saying, is is very different. So, I mean, if you had a singular message to deliver to those that run their life, by the amount of money that a dude has. And listen, there's platforms out there, shout out to Kevin Samuels, right? Who has done an incredible job in highlighting that, because I didn't even know this, that the majority of women want to be taken care of. They want to be provided for. And I didn't even no notice that it was as much as what it is until I started viewing his channel. So what do you say to those that are looking for men that are six figures plus when in reality, the majority of us are not doing that? I think the average salary is around $42,000 per year. If you had a singular message for them, what would you say? Well, I think, as I said, that we have some unrealistic expectations. Mm. Uh, the society has insisted that we demand from our man the one thing that they haven't allowed them to get and that's money mm. and just based just on that i would say good luck to them but nope. uh if the woman uh is looking for that you know she might get in a real low old age still looking for that so she might have to just find somebody that they can pool their resources Mm. and put their little money together and try to make it. The other thing is to for us to stop demanding everything that the enemy sell, trying to keep up with the Joneses and thinking we got to have a different outfit for every day. You know, all of that's just based on financial. That's not because anybody wants to see us looking nice. It's just they make money off of us, and so they always want to come up with any kind of scheme they can to get mm. us to give them the money, the money we spend on cell phones, the money we spend on drugs, the money mm. we spend on alcohol, you know, the money we spend on brand name clothes. Most of the money we have, we give away to other people of trying by trying to make ourselves look presentable or be presentable. So, you know, I used to, my uh, grandson used to tell me, I don't want to wear that because they're going to be looking at me. I say, well, who is the they? You know, and you know, we as adults, we talk about, well, you can't wear white after Labor Day. Why? Who said that? You know, see, I have to know who say different things. I have to examine them before I just jump on the bandwagon and stuff. And I want to know, well, who said it and why they say that and when, whatever. And so, you know, you have that kind of situation. But uh, looking at this great grand boy in here, mm. you know, and trying to decide, okay, now which way can we try to give it to him so it'll be palatable so that he can understand? Because I would like him to live, to grow up, and know that I was his great grandmother. Mm -hmm. See? And I want him to be introduced as the great grandson of Sister Sherazad Ali. See? There it is. But I think uh, what I would want, what you're saying, was just, just do something for yourself. Join on to your own kind. Mm. Like I said, I don't tell people to go get no new religion. You ain't got to go organize no club. You have a whole tribe there, usually with the people you live with. You got boys and girls, males and females. 
It's enough in each of our groups to do something. One little change, two little changes, whatever. How many industries could we shut down if we relaxed our ego and stopped thinking that we got to have that brand in order to be accepted by the rest of the people who ain't got nothing either? Uh Uh-oh. All just crazy. Crazy. But that's what they got us caught up in. You know, we want the approval and acceptance of strangers. Which makes no sense. Over something we bought from the enemy. Which it makes no sense. Live a minimalistic lifestyle. Then we can pool our assets together and right. create our own infrastructure. Yeah. Invest that's in not, our own communities. Do it inside of your own crib, in your own house, with those people. Start there and mm. learn what the obstacles are going to be. Mm. And work that out. And if you can build something in there, okay, everybody, we're going to all say $1 a week. If you can do that without falling out at the end of the month about who got the $30. Mm. See, they didn't make rules and laws in business to help us get in business. They made those rules and laws to keep us out of business. Uh Uh-oh. We need to recognize how many things are set up as legitimate requirements that are really set up as a roadblock for us. Mm. They tell us not to do the very thing they did. They started everything they got in the basement, in the garage, in the closet. And we have this issue. We laugh at and mock the brothers who are vending on the street. Mm. I can respect the man out there trying to sell something, whatever he got to sell. Working. Yeah. Mm. We ain't got no better position because somebody working for the white people we know what that requires of your mental head and the strain on your heart and brain to try to work for them and the more money you make from them the harder that life is Mm. you know what i loved what you also were saying too is when someone tells you to do something you question it you ask why i think that there's too many in our communities that live life by being lemmings And they just, they receive input from the marketing, from the TV, from the music, and they don't question it. They don't ask why. I think we've lost the sight of asking why, or how does this really pertain to me? What is the benefit? Right. And what's the history on it? What Mm. happened when y'all did that before? Because we don't have any new information out here. It's just repackaged and put in certain ways to make us go forward this time. Mm. All right, we got a, we got well, a couple this, other questions. Oh, go I ahead. I wanted to answer one question. We didn't have one caller. Oh, you, you listen. You want me to open up the phone lines? Yeah, I wanted to answer at least one question. Oh, oh, oh let's do it. Yeah, yeah. We could, we could absolutely do it. Hold on, let me, let me, uh, let me drop a link down up, down up in here. I don't, listen. I don't. It's gonna break my stream yard. It's gonna be people that's gonna be flying in here. I don't. Let's 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 take a. Let's take, I'm going to put it down in there. Let's see. Matter of fact, let me put it down in my Discord server. Um, I want anyone in my Patreon, if you guys have a question and want to come up, Patreon members only, um, I'm going to put it in the For the Culture chat. Patreon members, Here's here goes the link. If you want to come up and if you want to chat, then let's talk about it. Look in the For the Culture chat. If you guys want to come, it might take them a second because I don't okay. think that they were prepared. I wasn't but even listen, prepared for that. I'm going to think about what you said about getting my own site or something. Listen, if you, do you need some help? Because <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I got you. Listen, you you just sent out the APB and I'm sure I'm flying in. I'm coming down. What's up? You know, I, I know I a thing or two. It. I could try it for a few months and see how it went. I'm your guy. <laughs> say less. <laughs> say say less, okay? <laughs> guys, if you guys come on, please put on your camera. Please, please, please put on your camera. I want to make this a visual experience. I want to make this a visual experience. I will wholeheartedly appreciate it. Sister Ali, I'm not joking, by the way. I hope you... <laughs> I hope you do know that. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I am not joking. We we because the the amount of information, the amount of knowledge, um, 
the things that you speak and, and also on top of that is to see the transition of those of the detractors before and they've yes. come around as they've gained an age and they've and they've gotten gotten rid of the swells of modern yeah. fem, feminism and the and sexual liberation failed. movement they have failed over and over and over what they as failure is a great motivator mm. to do something different eventually absolutely yeah. absolutely so let's see. Uh, I think folks are turning on their cameras right now. Yeah, they weren't they weren't ready for that. <laughs> oh, OK. Hold on. Uh, let me see. I had a couple of other questions in here as well. We'll wait a quick second until folks okay. get in here. If no one's going to come in, in the next 30 seconds, I will put the link down into the chat as well. If none of the Patreon members want to get on or are ready, then those that are down <laughs> into the channel members, we're going to we're going to we're going to open up to the channel members as well. Uh, let me see. There's a couple other questions in here. Um, uh, oh, here, here's a pretty good one. As a black man that wants a black woman, okay, how can we deal with some black woman that not only feel I should accept their lack of femininity, but overpower it and make them want to submit to want to be feminine? I got to hear your, your answer on this because I've actually <laughs> dealt with this in my life as well. And I'm just well, like, I don't know what to do at this yeah. point. It's just no, just just the, the, the key word is just I disagree. Yeah. Right. I, I just well, don't want to be agreeable. I don't think you're going to find that in regard to. Well, most of you are attracted to women, you know, who are maybe exceptionally beautiful or who, you know, have uh, these fabulous bodies or something. And sometimes that that woman has had a lot of experiences of having her way about things and uh, behaving in a certain way and being accepted no matter what because of her outward appearance that you may not be able to find what you're looking for there. So you might need to uh, expand your view a little bit and get mm. somebody who, I'm not saying unattractive because beauty is uh, attraction is usually physical at first. So I'm just saying that you may need to look at a woman that might not look completely like you want her to look, but who might behave like you want her to behave. And I guarantee you how she behaves is going to be more long lasting and important to you than how she looks. Mm. Behavior is key. Yes. You know, and I, I tell, I tell the, uh, I tell the brothers that, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I see myself with a strong, with a strong eight with incredible attitude because <laughs> you know I've, I've i've dealt with my share of the eight and the nine pluses and yeah. man it, it you know it can get difficult it can get very difficult uh I, listen i have uh someone that's down in here right now let's bring let's bring her up oh. hey hey there <laughs> you're first in here you're quick <laughs> oh my god i am so excited Arizona, how are you honey I have been I'm wondering great. where you've been since for 30 years. Oh my God. I'm so excited I have to just see been you. out here trying to fight the wolf pack. Oh my God. Well, listen, <laughs> listen, when MTR announced that you were coming on his show, I said, Oh, I have to call in because okay. this young man is such an influence in in our black manosphere i just yes. adore him and yes. the fact that you agreed to come and be interviewed by him spoke volumes because he is such a good guy in the black manosphere i'm i'm with you honey i am a elder i'm a black woman i have your book i love you i have been a fan and when you started resurfacing, i was like where has she been where has she been for these last 30 years well I had to take off about 18 years to uh, do what I'm instructed to do, which is to birth, nurse, and raise children. And I right. raised my grandson. I raised oh, my, grandson. my goodness. And so I took time off to do that. Oh, honey, you are so important to us. Well, Here, you you know, we're, we're in the midst of this, of this gender war. And it is a war because... I came forward because I heard the cry of all my black brothers in the black manosphere for an older black woman to step up to the plate and guide and direct our modern women because I, 
there's so much confusion and just so much misinformation that they're running with that's just getting us deeper and deeper into this abyss mm -hmm. of what we're living with mm -hmm. in the black community. So right. we need to just speak out and tell people what we need to do. And, and MTR is, is a brave soul. What I wanted to ask you primarily is your opinion of our black abortion rate. Uh -oh. This this has me so upset. Our black abortion rate indicates to me that we're out there having sex willy nilly and using abortion as birth control. And this is just so upsetting to me because I think this is why some of us are so angry because many of us have had two, three or four abortions and we're just. Well, it's, it's not just our young people who are doing that. Our middle aged, our older women, Right, I know, and and and, and my YouTube, yeah, yeah. It, it, Everybody's it, it, using it as a form of birth control. But I had said earlier in the show that the Latino, the Puerto Ricans, the Asians, everybody's out birthing us right now. Mm. And part right. of it is because of abortion, and the other part is just because women are not interested in having children anymore. I know there doesn't seem to be any any desire to be good mothers. You know, motherhood is a bad thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I go online and I'm doing research. Nobody, you know, white women had issues with taking care of their babies. We never did back in the 60s. You remember when we were invited into the women's movement mm -hmm. where white women didn't want to take, be at home stuff. Well, they, they're not used to it. They're not used to it. The only reason that their children survived 40 years ago is because they were getting all of their nutrients out of the black breast. Uh oh. Right. And and also too, so I wanted to add. I wanted to make maybe one um, one question per caller, and we're gonna keep on round robin and right, out. But so, so but, but, but but Deborah, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank oh, you. Thank you, honey. I'm so honored. You are a godsend. Thank you. Thank I you. love you. Thank you. We'll talk later. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Let me see who's down in there. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, we got someone from the Patreon. Tea leaves. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. Can y'all hear me well? Yes, sir. All right. Um, it's an honor to be in y'all presence today. I think this is a monumental uh, step in beginning of learning new things. Um, and I appreciate y'all having this discussion. Thank you. Um, my question is is um, um, and I and I get this uh from a channel I've been following. Recently, um, um, his name is Anton Daniels. Uh, he he talks about sometimes about uh, not using the plight that was given to us by you know the enemy as an excuse, but trying to move forward and uh, and and despite those challenges, uh, continue to grow and, and progress and and, and uh, overcome. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you believe that? We do have the ability to overcome, uh, and you know, or or are the plights that are against us? Um, are they too strong? And you know, can't or sometimes it's easy for us no. to succumb to that. Thanks, T. Okay, uh, this is our last one, brother. Okay, um, uh, I don't think that there's anything that's too powerful or too strong for you to handle, since you are the maker and the owner and the cream of the planet Earth. Mm. You just have to be able to separate your thoughts from the thoughts of the enemy who has raised you. Mm. And you have to be able to take some instruction that you may not at the time completely agree with, but it may be something that's good for you that'll help you bring forth and bring back your power. Mm. But no, ain't nothing gonna be too big for the black man. You was the first and you will be here and you will come up and produce whatever it is you need. What we're trying to do is to get you and uh, all of the other brothers, which you may already have, with the right woman so that you can flourish and help her to flourish. Awesome. All right. It, it, okay, I'm getting I, ready to go. Th there it is. Listen, I am so appreciative of your time. I'm so appreciative as well as the entire audience is so appreciative of 
your knowledge. And for folks that are down up in here, the link to the eBay, um, the eBay link to your book is right down in the description box down below, as well as your cash app as well. It's right in the description box. Okay, you talked earlier about being able to support, all right? This is the type of support that is necessary to ensure that the information hits our eyes. Because I tell you what, it takes 20, 30, 40, 50 times of he hearing the, sim the similar message for folks to finally get That's it. That's right. That's right. It takes it. it. It takes it. It takes that constant barrage yes, of is. expectations, of Repeat standards. Repeat means everything. There it is. You know what I mean? So I think that is exceptionally important. Uh, and also, take me up on the offer. If you're serious, I will right. come. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we, we got contact information now, so I'm, right. I'm more than willing. You understand? <laughs> so, but again, but, but sister, thank you so much for your time. Yes, your knowledge is overwhelming. All right? Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Shakira. <laughs> you didn't tell me. All right. All right. Awesome. Uh, folks, again, the after party is in my Patreon. It's in my Discord server. If you want to be, uh, become a part, link down. The link is right here. If you want to have the after party discussion, the link is right here. We're going to go down in there. We're going to chop it up based on how this conversation went today. Thank you all again so much for your love, so your, for, for your support. Um, it was it was an amazing stream to hear <laughs> to, to hear the good sister give the sign off for this audience it was absolutely unbelievable to hear the consistent message and the things that are in her book go pick up the book what are you waiting for it makes no sense for you to, to continue to wait it's available the link is right down there you understand what i'm saying shout out to everybody shout out to the fam shout out to the love we appreciate you Okay, continue to support the content, continue to support the channel, continue to support the other content creators of that you believe in. Don't just pay attention to me. Don't just pay attention to the other person, but pay attention to those that make sense and ask why. What receipts are they showing? What what things have they proved? As I said before, this is year of the receipts. And I wholly believe that you understand me. Shout out to all the super chats. Sorry, I couldn't get to everything. Of course, shout out to all the new channel members. Shout out to the Patreon gang. We working over here. You understand me? Until next time, YouTube. Wait, hold up. I got an outro. Hold on. Let me hit that outro. <laughs>